Hello and welcome to the Ben Washington Baptist Church online service. We are a church in Irving, Texas who believe in the Word of God, the will of God, and the power of God. Our prayer is that something is said to enlighten you, empower you, and inspire you throughout your walk with the Lord. May God bless you abundantly. To present us without fault before his throne. Good morning, Ben Washington. Welcome to our online virtual service. We are excited to be able to uh, join you in your in your living rooms, your kitchen, your your backyard patio, wherever you may be. We're excited that you're able to tune in with us for our morning worship service. We pray that uh, that God will bless you through this service. We had a special service this morning, if I may. Uh, and so uh, we're going to spend a large part of our service just talking to the family. Uh, but I want to uh, thank you for uh, tuning in. We're going to ask you to, to pray for us. We're missing you uh, in, in terms of your physical presence, but we, but we know that God is keeping you and blessing you. And so would you bow with us for a word of prayer so that, that we can get started? And then we're going to have... Uh, have uh, our minister of worship and music bless us with a song and then we'll come back shortly thereafter father god we just thank you for allowing us to gather for the purpose of worshiping you we thank you father that you are our father that we can call upon you your word says draw near unto you and you will draw near unto us so father god we come to you right now we ask you that you search our hearts, Father. We pray, O oh God, that you would remove those things from our heart that uh, keep us from drawing close to you. We pray, Father God, that you would create within us a clean heart and you will renew within us a right spirit. We ask, O oh Lord God, that you would speak to us and speak through us. And we pray, O oh God, that you would bless the Ben Washington family both near and far. Bless those, Father, who are not part of the family, but who have tuned in to join in our worship service. We ask that you will bless them, Father. May we hear from you in this very hour. Bless us, we do pray all for your glory in Jesus' name. Amen, amen, amen. Amen. Praise the Lord, everybody. Through it all, God is still good and He's still kind. And we come to worship Him even on this morning. I've got so much to do. So many wonderful blessings and so many open doors a brand new mercy along with each new day that's why I praise you. And for this, I give you praise. For every mountain, for every mountain. You brought me over For every trial You see me through For every blessing Thank you. 
You brought me over. For every sickness, Collins for reminding us the power of God and what he can bring us through. We want to thank all of you for again joining in our worship service and we want to thank all of you for your faith, your, con your faithful contributions uh, during the pandemic. We want to thank you for understanding that the church is able to do what it does because you've been faithful in your, in your living as well as your giving. We want to thank also uh, the Hospitality Committee for uh, ministering on yesterday where we had 300 meals prepared, uh, a grab and go. We want to thank uh, our food pantry ministry and our coordinator, Jackie Arkadine, and all the volunteers who were able to put not just the meals that was given by the hospitality, but to provide even, even more food. Because we believe that uh, Christianity is a, is a faith that ought to be practiced. People need to know that you love them, not by what you say, but by what you do. So we want to thank you for your contribution. I want to thank the members who uh, went through our Alexio training on, on last Sunday. As we mentioned to you, we have a new updated giving software system. And so we pray that if you have any questions about uh, how to give through the new platform, that you'll be able to get your questions answered. But if you, have, uh, if you have problems, you can also give not only through online giving, but you can also give uh, through, through mailing your tithes and offerings either to the church or to the P.O. box. So thank you. And so we're going to ask right now that you bow with us so that we will give in the right spirit. For, for God loves a cheerful giver. So Father God, we pray right now that you bless us as we prepare to continue to worship you. We worship you, Father, in spirit as well as in truth. But Lord, we also worship you, Father, through the bringing of our tithes and our offerings to you. So we pray, Father God, that you bless the gifts as well as the givers. We pray, Father God, that you will pour out a blessing upon them that they shall not have room enough to receive it. And we pray, Father God, that the gifts that come in uh, to this place, to this storehouse, that we in turn, Father, may be able to be blessed in order to be a blessing. Help us to feed the hungry. Help us to close the naked. Help us to visit those who are in prison or those who are sick. And we pray, Father, that we will bring good tidings to them to let them know that Jesus still lives. This is our prayer in Jesus' name. Amen, amen, and amen. <coughs> well, we want to uh, ask you to be in prayer for our, our members. Uh, be in prayer for Ken Franklin. Uh, Ken lost his mother uh, on this week. Also be in prayer for the Richardson family. As some of you may have already heard, Sister Hazel uh, went on home to glory. 
uh, and, and we love Hazel and we love the Richardson family and uh, Hazel will sit right there in that seat there and, and so our heart is heavy today but uh, the thing that we do know those who trust in God they're in good hands amen and so we want to keep them in our prayers and there are others who during this season of, of unusual season there are many others who have lost loved ones continue to pray for uh, the Howard family, Sister Demetria Howard, who lost her mom, Pamela Howard, Brother Louis Ray, and Eugene, pr pray for them. Uh, but there are others, I, I could do the roll call, uh, of people who've lost loved ones in, in, in 2020. And so as a church, we show the love of Christ by, by showing up. We show the love of Christ by praying for them. Uh, but we also believe that God is speaking, and, and so we want to, uh, if we may, in the time that we have allotted to us today, we're going to ask that you take out your Bible or your, your phone app, turn with us to the Gospel according to St. Luke, chapter 12. And we would like to read verse 49 all the way through verse 54. Luke chapter 12, beginning with verse 49. These are the words of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. I came to send fire on the earth, and how I wish it was already kindled. But I have a, baptize, a baptism to be baptized with, and how distressed I am till it is accomplished. Do you suppose that I came to give peace on earth? I tell you, not at all, but rather divisions. For from now on, five in one house will be divided, three against two and two against three. Father will be divided against son and son against father. Mother against daughter and daughter against mother. Mother-in-law against daughter-in-law and daughter-in-law against mother-in-law. Then he also said to the multitudes, whenever you see a cloud rising out of the west, immediately you say, a shower is coming. And so it is. And when you see the soft wind blow, you say, there will be hot weather, and there is. Hypocrites, you can discern the face of the sky and of the earth, but how is it you do not discern this time? We want to speak on this subject. Do you know what time it is? Do you know what time it is. Have you ever pondered or wondered what time it is? And have you ever looked at your wrist and had a watch on it to assure you that you had the answer to the question of what time it is? And have you ever been disopposed where you didn't have a watch, but you were anxious to know what time it is? So you would pose a question. You would ask to someone who was nearby you, do you have the time? And if they understood your question, they would give you the exact time that you were seeking. And have you ever did not have a watch, but you were uh, anxious to see what time it was? So you would look to see if there was a clock on the wall so you could know if it's past that time. You ever seen people in church who uh, the service appeared to be too long? And so in, in the midst of the service, they would turn their back to the wall to see what time it is. And have you ever found yourself where you didn't have a watch on? And most young people today, 
don't buy watches. Those of us who are old school, we even though we have a phone that, that has the time on it, we still like to wear we still like to wear watches. Why? Because we are accustomed to uh, keeping time by what's on our hand. I believe today, more than any other time that I can recall, that you and I should be able to know what time it is. Our curiosity should be such that we should seek out a watch or a phone to know without question the exact time it is. Why, why do you say we ought to know what time it is? Now, I, I believe that we're living in a time where those who have spiritual insight should know exactly what time it is. And we should adjust ourselves at that exact moment. The Bible tells us that God can call you at any time. Am I right, Derek? The Bible tells us in Matthew chapter 25 or chapter 24 that there were 10 virgins and a call went out at midnight. In other words, God can call you at a moment in time when you least expect it. He might call you at midnight. Not only may God call you at midnight. He even warns us through his word that he will come like a thief in the night. In other words, he will come when you least expect him. So he tells you in his word, watch. For you don't know the day nor the hour when the Son of Man shall appear. I believe that we are living in a time that the, that the Old Testament prophets and the early church were anticipating. I believe they were looking forward to the coming of the Messiah and the church was looking forward to the return of Jesus. And I believe that, that because we have people here who study God's word without a doubt, you don't have to look at your watch to see what time it is. You don't have to look at your iPhone to, to uh, find out what time it is. You don't even have to look at the clock on the wall to see what time it is. And I believe you can look in the Word of God and God will tell you time is running out. I believe without a doubt. God is saying to us right now, you need to get your house in order because time is running out. You need to decide whose side you're on because you don't have much time to make up your mind. Sometimes God will give you a warning that you don't have much time. But there are other times God will just come without a warning. But isn't it good that we have a God who loves us so much that he'll warn you before he come? Even, even, even those of us who like to watch football, we like to watch the end of the game because, because the, most, the most exciting part of a game is usually after the two-minute warning. Am I right, Minister Clint? That, that, that Roger Starback could work magic in the last few minutes. Why? Because he knew that he only had a few minutes left to bring the Cowboys from the jaws of defeat to the jaws of victory. So, 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 so I believe that when you look in God's word, God is telling us you don't have much time left. So, so Jesus says 
to his disciples. He says, I have come to set the earth on fire. Mm -hmm. Can I tell you something? Uh, a lot of us believe that Jesus came to make peace. Now, he is the prince of peace, but how many of you know that, that a lot of times before you can have peace, you have to have a fire. There are some things that need to be put out. Just this week, I, I, I had a chance to go and, and get a household item that I had. I knew I needed to get in case that was an emergency, so I went and bought me a fire extinguisher. Reason why I decided to buy that fire extinguisher, uh, Minister White, is because if there was ever a fire in the house, I wanted to be able to have a device that I could, I could put the fire out quickly. And, 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 and because I hadn't had one, I decided to play around with the fire extinguisher and I, I cut the little device that I cut off and then I, I pulled the pin off like I, like I said, so okay, I pulled it off and then I, and then uh, lo and behold, I pushed the button and all of a sudden something came out. I discovered that the reason why you have a fire extinguisher is that there may be a fire. Right. And Jesus says to his disciples and those who were listening, you think I come to bring peace, but I want you to know I come to, I, I come to bring fire on the earth. He says, Jesus said here that, 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 that really, I have come to cause people to decide whose side they're on. Yeah. He said, in, in a house, my name is going to come up. And in that house, there's going to be three for me, and there's going to be two against me. In that house, there's going to be a division because they're going to have to have to decide because of who I am. Whether they're going to be for me or they're going to be against me. And you know, there are some people who are all right with Jesus. And there are others who don't want to have anything to do with Jesus. Jesus said here, that father would be against son and son would be against father. And, and that mother would be against daughter and daughter would be against mother and mother-in-law would be against daughter-in-law and vice versa. Now, you know, uh, I've seen fathers and sons get into arguments. Uh, I can recall... Uh, a father and son uh, uh, who literally got into an argument and a, a, a shooting occurred and I was shocked at, 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 at uh, an argument that could get so intense that would lead to a death. And I discovered to my, uh, uh, to my shock and amazement and bewilderment that the argument was about Earl Campbell. They got into an argument about a football player and, and words were exchanged. And haven't you seen people that get into argument about little stuff? Yeah. They, they stop talking to each other about little stuff. But can you imagine getting into an argument that, <coughs> that's so intense that it divides the house? But I'm going to tell you, there are some things that are worth fighting for. There are some things worth arguing for. There are some things worth standing up for. And if there is anything worth standing up for, it, it is standing up for your faith. In the book of Jude, it talks about contend for the faith. And I believe that, that in, in this day and time, you are to, you are to fight rather than switch. Yeah. Some people are switching rather than fighting. I believe that there are some things worth standing up for. And so uh, if you're going to have a falling out, 
Let it be about something or someone that's worth fighting for. Can I tell you, your faith ought to be worth fighting for. And your belief about who Jesus is ought to cause you to cause you to say, no matter what, I understand. I just saw an episode where, where a Jewish person who had been taught that Jesus was not the Messiah... And he started reading the scriptures and he read Isaiah 53. And Isaiah 53 talks about the one who, who was pierced yeah. and who was bruised and, and who died for our, our transgression and was wounded for our iniquity. And, 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 and it talks about the one who, who, who gave his life as a sin offering. And he began to read the Old Testament scripture and the Old Testament convinced him that Jesus was the Messiah and he told his dad that he had accepted Jesus as the Messiah and his father said to him, what you have done is worse than how Adolf Hitler treated us. In other words, his dad said, I abandon you. There was, one, there was one, one, one Jewish person who read the scripture and was convinced that Jesus was the Messiah. And when he told his parents that he had accepted Christ as the Messiah, they locked him up and put him in a psychiatric ward. They thought he had lost his mind. Yeah. And isn't it true that when you become totally sold out for Jesus, there are people who will disassociate with you and, and who will think you have lost your your living mind. They're asking, why are, you, why are you going to church? Why are, you, why are you giving those people your money? Why are you doing this? They don't understand what you know. So Jesus said, because of me, there's going to be division. Because of me, there's going to be a falling out. Because of me, some people are not going to like you. And can I tell you something? When you stand up for truth and for righteousness, there are going to be people who are not going to like you. And can you handle that? Anybody remember that movie, A Few Good Men? Anybody remember that movie when, 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 when Tom Cruise had Jack Nicholson on the witness stand and, 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 and Tom Cruise start start battering him and battering him and, 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 and Tom Cruise said, I want the truth. And Jack Nicholson said, you can't handle the truth. There are some people when you tell them the truth about Jesus, they can't seem to handle it. But the scripture says, you shall know the truth and the truth shall set you free. Yeah. Jesus said it did. Jesus said, I am the truth. He said, I am the way. He didn't say, I am a way. He said, I am the way. And if you are trying to get your way to God, I have news for you. You can't get to the Father unless you go through the Son. Yeah. I have news for you. Becoming a member of a church is not going to save you. Walking down the aisle and giving the preacher your right hand is not going to save you. What is going to save you is when you give your heart to Jesus. I'll never forget one time when I was in college and I was, uh, I was on fire for the Lord. And I picked up a man during a hot summer day. And I, and I, I and it, cause it was hot. He was walking a long stretch and I decided to pick him up. And I was going to use that occasion to share my faith with him. I picked up a brother. I picked him up and we got in the little old Chevette that I was driving. And I picked him up and, and I started to witness to him. And I, and I, and I made the mistake of, I made the mistake of, uh, I didn't say God, Clint. I said, I made the mistake of, of, of saying the name Jesus. He had told me where he wanted to go, where he was going, and, and, and I said, I can take you there. But along the way, I didn't want to just give him a ride. I wanted to give him a ride to glory. I wanted to tell him about Jesus. And so as soon as I mentioned the name Jesus, every foul word that could come out of a person's mouth came out of his mouth. He cursed Jesus. 
He talked about Jesus. But that was my Jesus that he was talking about. I was shocked and dismayed by somebody that could talk about the Jesus the way he talked about Jesus. I, I, I never ever put my foot on the accelerator as, as, as quickly as I could to get him out of the car as soon as I could. All I'm trying to tell you is that some people, when you share your faith with them because you know what time it is, some people are not going to like it. And they're going to say no. They'll say no. Well, why is it that you should, be, you should ask the question about what time it is? Well, number one, if you know that we are approaching the last of the last days, that tells you you don't have much time left. That's number one. Number two, why you should know what time it is. Well, if you understand that God can call you at any time, young or old, you need to know you can't afford to waste time. And if, and, and if you are over your fabulous, if you pass your fabulous 50, your, your season 60s, your settled 70s, your aching 80s, you already know. You already know. You, it might be any day now. My God, stop signing here. So besides the fact that God can come at any time, you, may, you might leave here before God come back. There's a third reason why you ought to want to know what time it is. If you got loved ones who don't know Jesus and you really, really care about them, you ought to want to know, are they in good standing with the Father? Just talk to... to one of our deacons who had a good relationship with a, with a guy, and, 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 and I asked the question, which I ask the question all the time, I said, you know, are, you know, is he a Christian? He told me that, he, that his friend that he had, had known for over, over 20 plus years was, was, was told that all he could do for him was go home and die. And I just asked the question, do you know if you've accepted Christ? And he wasn't sure. And I said, you know, you, you might want to go talk to him. Why is that? The reason is you don't want to be like the thief on the cross who got saved just in the nick of time. That's cutting it close, am I right? So you don't want to be like the thief on the cross who already knew that, uh, that before the day was over, he was going to meet his maker. You don't want to cut that close. So if you have a loved one, whether it be your husband or your wife or your kids or, or your sisters or your brothers or your neighbors or your friends, if you have a loved one and, and they don't know who you know, you might want to tell them, what time it is. Well, I did tell you Jesus is gonna, will cause a falling out. So it may be that the friend that you care about, the neighbor you care about, the, the uncle you care about, the brother you care about, it may be that when you pin them down and talk to them about Jesus, it may be that they may not want to have anything to do with you from that point on. But at least you have the satisfaction of knowing you've done what God has put on your heart to do. Can you imagine, can you imagine seeing someone that you love pass away and you never took the time to witness to him? Can I go on? Well, Jesus said this. He said, when you see a cloud rising from this direction, 
You know that it's getting ready to rain. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Some of us can look in the sky and see a dark cloud and we get that as an ominous sign that it is getting ready to rain. And so we know that, 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 that uh, we may be in a position where we don't want to get our hair wet. We don't want to be in a thunderstorm, so we'll, we'll get to go quicker because we realize it's soon it's about to rain. So many of us will prepare ourselves for uh, uh, impending rain. Then Jesus said this. You can even tell by the falling of the leaves that a certain season is about to approach. You can even tell, especially here in Texas, you can tell that it's going to get hot all the month of August. Why is that? Because it's been hot all the month of July. And you know by past experiences that, that as long as we're in the summer months, it's going to be hot. So you dress accordingly because of what? The weather. So how is it that you can tell when it's going to rain? How, can it, how is it that you can tell that it's going to be hot? How is it that you can tell the weather? But you can't tell what time it is. May I suggest there are some reasons why we can't tell what time it is. First of all, we're operating on borrowed time. In other words, the time that you have is allocated. In other words, God will let you know that the time that you live here on earth is not indefinite. It has a beginning time and it has an ending time. And I did tell you that there are occasions where God will let you know you don't have much time. Other things, he'll just take you. Can I give you an example of, of, of how God told one man? By the name of Hezekiah, God told Hezekiah, told Isaiah to go to Hezekiah and, and say, and tell Hezekiah to set his house in order. Mm -hmm. So when you know that you don't have much time, what is it that you do? You get your house in order. When you know you don't have much time, you get your insurance papers ready. You show, up, you show everything to your spouse. Why? Because you know you don't have much time. You get your house in order. Well, how do you get your spiritual house in order? That's what Jesus is really talking about. You, can, you see this, you see this, you see this. How is it that you can't tell Jesus is getting ready to come back? I need to wrap this up. There are, because I study the Bible and because I study prophecy, I can assure you when you search the scriptures, although Jesus did not tell us the day or the hour, he did say to you, you can tell the seasons in which I'm about, which I am about to come back. How is that? First of all, he said this. According to Daniel chapter nine, he said this, brother Clint. He said, "And before I return, there has to be a nation called Israel." 1948. After two thousand years of no longer being a nation. All of a sudden, in 1948, after World War II, after six million of God's people had been uh, 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 sent to the death chambers, uh, uh, after World War II in 1948, those people who had been dispersed across the world came back to their homeland, back to the state called Israel, and, it, and, and in one day they became a nation. So God said, 
And before I come back, there has to be a nation called Israel. Number two, God also said you can tell the time because in the last days, there's going to be perilous times. He said, he said, he, he said, uh, children would be, would be disobedient to parents. They would be unthankful. They would be unholy. They would be without natural affection. He said men would be lovers of pleasure more than lovers of God. Can't you see what time it is? He even said this. You can tell that I'm getting ready to come back because before I come back, there will be a falling away first. In other words, there'll be a departure from the things of God. There'll be a falling away from truth and from a, a standard of morality. Can't you see that? Can't you see that he also said that there will be a time of lawlessness? I just, I just saw on the news just this morning that they were having a funeral in the city of Chicago and 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 and, and, and there were gunshots. 14 people got shot at a funeral. Mm -hmm. You want to know what time it is? I believe it's time to get your house in order. You want to know what time it is? I believe it's time for the church to start being the church. You want to know what time it is? I believe it is time for those who say that they love the Lord, that they're going to stand up for God. I believe it's time right now. I don't believe you can... I don't believe you can straddle the fence. I don't believe you can, you can uh, be, a, be hot one day and cold next day. I believe right now is the time to decide whose side you're on. Right now. We talk about serving a right now God. Right now is the time. Everything I've read in the Bible is pointing to the return of Jesus. There was a prophet by the name of Daniel. When God had told him that the thing that he had revealed to him would be, would not be revealed until the end of time. And he told Daniel, seal it up until the time of the end. Seal it up. It's not for you to know right now, but, but in the end, if there'll be a time, Daniel chapter 12, there'll be a time when they'll know. So the things that Daniel was told to seal up, the Bible tells us in the book of Revelation that Jesus broke the seals and revealed what was coming. All I'm telling you is that every time you go to the movies, before you see the, the, uh, the movie that you're there to see, they'll show you some, some movies that are there uh, scheduled to be at a certain time. And, and, and what they try to tell you is this. Come back. Because there's a, there's a coming attraction that we want you to see. All I'm telling you is this. Jesus is coming soon. You need to get ready. You need to know what time it is. Now, I'm not saying you have to be a Bible scholar. I'm not even saying that you have to, uh, have to know uh, Greek or Latin or Hebrew. As a matter of fact, you don't have to have, to have a Ph.D. to understand what time it is. As a matter of fact, you, all you need to know is that my house is burning and I need to get out. And if you know that your house is burning, if you don't have that which will extinguish the fire, you need to get out. Am I right? Well, Tony Evans said this. When you look at your watch, you may not understand what, what causes the little hand to move around and the big hand to move around. You may not understand all the intricacies of the watch because all you see is what's on the outside. But somewhere on the inside, there are some mechanisms that are at work that allows you to be able to keep the accurate time. All I'm trying to say is this. You may not know everything in the Bible from A to Z, but if you know that Jesus died for your sins, 
And if you know that you are a sinner, and if you know that, that the wages of sin is death, and if you know that you don't want to go to hell when you die, and the only way to get to heaven is to accept Jesus Christ, you want to know what time it is? It's time to accept Jesus. Now, I've said enough right there. And you may be saying, well, how do I know that the Bible is true? Well, how do you know there's, there's air to breathe? Do you have to see the air in order to believe it's real? All I'm trying to say is this. God is at work. You may not be able to see God at work, but you see the effects of God at work. How else can you explain what we've been going through this year unless God is trying to get your attention? And can I believe, can I tell you what I believe God is saying to Ben Washington Baptist Church? Can I tell you what God is saying to the Christian church? Can I tell you what God is saying to the atheists and what God is saying to the man who believe that there is no God? Can I tell you what God is saying? God is saying two things, Brother White. He said, number one, do you know what time it is? And number two, Jason, he said, do you have time? <laughs> In other words, do you know what time it is? And if you know what time it is, you ought to get right with him. But second of all, he's saying this. Do you have time for me? Do you have time for me? I got you up this morning. Do you have time for me? I put food on your table. Do you have time? My pastor used to always say this, and I remember this. Who else do you know that'll run you over to save you? Who else do you know that will slow your road in order to get your attention. Who else do you know that'll put you on your sick bed yeah. and ask the question, can you hear me now? Who else do you know that can speak through a little child and, and the child will ask you, Father, when we die, Will we go to heaven? Who else do you know that can tell you before he get here that he's coming? Who else do you know that'll tell you what happened before he came the first time and tell you what's going to happen before he come the second time? Who else do you know? that will tell you in advance, I'm going to die, but on the third day, I'm going to get up. Who else do you know that will get up from the grave and say to the grave, I got the keys of hell and death. Who else do you know that can say, I once was dead, but now I'm alive forevermore. Who else do you know? That's going to come riding on a white horse and going to have a banner around his waist that says King of Kings and Lord of Lords. Who else do you know yeah. that, that whenever the angels are declaring his holiness, who else do you know that the angels will take the crowns off their head and bow down and worship him? Who else do you know that men will travel from afar and say, we have come to worship the king. Who else do you know? Who else do you know that can take five loaves of bread and two fishes and feed a multitude? Who else do you know? Who else do you know that can, that can see his disciples in a ship and walk on water to greet them. And who else do you know that can say 
uh, to Peter who said, Lord, if it's you, come. Who else do you know that can say come? Who else do you know that can take mud and put on the eyes of those that are blind and they can see? Who else do you know that can stop a funeral procession right in the midst and say, get up. Who else do you know can tell the family whose daughter has died? She's not dead. She's just sleeping. Yeah. Who else do you know that can hang on the cross and say, Father, forgive them for they know not what they do. Who else do you know that even while he's dying on the cross can give a promise to a thief who changed his mind in the nick of time? Oh, this day yeah. you shall be with me in paradise. Who else do you know that can walk around on the earth 40 days after he has been raised from the dead yeah. and can ride a cloud in the heaven? And the angels say, why stand ye a gazing? The same Jesus who left shall come in like man. Who else do you know that can stop a man who is persecuting the church? Stop him on his horse and knock him off and say, Paul, Paul, why are you persecuting me? Who else do you know that can say from heaven, I am Jesus whom you persecuted? All I'm trying to tell you is, do you know what time it is? So right now, without me being too mellow dramatic, if you die today, do you know where you spend eternity? Yes, my heart is heavy because Sister Hazel is no longer with us. But there is a certain joy I have in knowing this. She had faith in Jesus. I'm just trying to tell you, listen to this. A person who knows Jesus and dies is better than a person who does not know Jesus and die. A person who knows Jesus in their lifetime they're just sleeping My God. in the grave. But their spirits and souls are in heaven and they are rejoicing in the Lord. Can I, can I say to you? Do you know what time it is? Are you ready? Because I believe that we are at the midnight hour of human history. That God's going to take all of human history and collapse it and say it's done. It's over. That's it. Like, that, like a good movie, those of you that pay to go see a movie, you already know when the names start going down the road, at the end of every movie, they got two words. They just got two words. At the end of every movie, they just got two words. The two words they got is the end. See, see, a movie has a beginning and it has what's called the conclusion. It has what's called the end. But can I tell you what is good about a believer in Jesus? When you get past, when you get past Rambo 1, when you get past Rocky 1, there's a Rocky 2. If you get past Rocky 2, there's a Rocky 3. All I'm trying to tell you is that when you say yes to Jesus, it gets gooder and gooder. The best is yet to come. That's good news. All I'm trying to tell you is that when you accept Jesus, there is no end. It's just the beginning. 1,000 years is going to be just like one hour. It's going to get better and better and better and better. Thank you, Lord. Can I say this 
to all my brothers and sisters in Christ, and please do not be offended at me saying this. If you are used to operating on CP time, y'all know what I'm talking about. Waiting till the last minute. Y'all know what I'm talking about. Waiting, uh, you've been told to get there at 3 o'clock, but you come there at 3.30. You know what I'm talking about. All I'm trying to tell you is this. God keeps an appointment. Yes, he does. God has an appointed time. Clint Sutton, can I tell you what happens when you don't meet God at his appointed time? What happens? You know what that is, Clint? If you don't meet God at his appointed time, you have what is called a disappointment. You have missed it. Well, Let's wrap this up. You do not have to wait until we come back in this building at 3901 Frisco Drive. You don't have to wait until you come back here to get saved. Right where you are, if you believe that Jesus died for your sins, you believe that he was resurrected from the dead and you ask him to to come into your life and to save you right where you are, he can save you right today. And if you accept Christ as your personal savior, call the church and tell the church, I received Christ as my personal savior and I want to be baptized according to the script. We will baptize you. And if you are already a Christian and you're looking for a church home, what kind of church home should you look for? You should look for a church where they teach and preach Jesus Christ dead, buried, and resurrected. You should should go to a church where they teach the Bible, the whole truth of God's word. You should go to a church where they love you enough to tell you the truth. You should go to a church where you can serve God and produce fruit that's well-pleasing to him. So if you'll call the church, whether you are a candidate for baptism or you come in by a Christian experience, we've had people who've gotten baptized during the pandemic. We've had people who joined this church. All I'm trying to tell you is, when you know what time it is, don't wait. Do it now. Now, will you repeat after me as we end this service? Repeat after me. Now unto him him. who is able able. to keep me from falling falling. and to present me me. faultless Faultless. before his throne. throne. To the only wise God God. be power, power. glory, Glory. majesty, Majesty. henceforth, And forever. And the church said amen, amen, amen. We'll see you next week. God bless. Thank you for listening to the Ben Washington Baptist Church online Sunday service. We pray that you have been blessed.